Greetings Atlins, welcome to another episode of A Day in the Life. Today we have Project Nameless in the house, uh, Starlet Glanza with a 4E engine. The cylinder head is on the bench. We are doing valve stem seal replacements and I just wanted to share what is involved in the process. Maybe you can get some tips and tricks from it. For that you'll need some things and starting with a valve removal tool. This comes in very handy, you, I'll show you how to use it. Even though you don't need this uh, in certain cases, it comes in quite handy. You also need a magnetic pickup, very helpful. A long nose plus or some other way to remove the old seals. A uh, tweezer to help hold the locks in place. Um, the replacement seals themselves. Uh, some hydraulic fluid. You can use engine oil or hydraulic oil, whatever works. A way to organize and hold all your stuff. And uh, a block of wood. I'll explain how this works. It might also help to have a happy-faced green frog to keep things moving. So, um, let's see how this goes and I'll explain as best as I can as we move along. The reason for this uh, block of wood or piece of soft foam, if you can, is that this cylinder head is banked. So what happens is it sits at an angle and that means that uh, the exhaust valves in this case are seated further up compared to the intake uh, valves. So this just helps to hold the valves in place when you're pressing down the springs. And you don't have to do it, but it helps. It helps a lot to keep them from playing around. So that's what I discovered anyway. All right, let's get to it so that you can see how this gets done. Sometimes you get it right the first time. Sometimes it takes a few tries. So uh, I have the rug here because it helps to cover up the um, the assembly as you're doing this since the retainer locks tend to jump out at times and you don't want them flying into the galaxy so this shot will just be a wide angle shot of what i'm doing from a uh, distance and then i'll try getting closer zoom in and get some light in there so you can see what actually happens so remember the block of wood is already underneath to hold the valve uh, help us with not having it pop out and bob out so adjust the tool and then cover up in case things decide to go pop and just for the first click it will be quite difficult because the the locks have been in place for a while and they may not want to let go easily so just it's a touch and feel thing like i said once it releases you'll feel it you'll feel it in the tool and looks like we are released so at this point is where you use the magnetic pickup comes in very handy Put it in to pick up one of the locks. Once you have that, then you're okay. The valve will come, the valve spring and retainers will come off because there's nothing holding them anymore. So remove the cloth, remove the tool, and you are out. So we'll keep that there. Remove the other one, keep it on the side. The spring comes off. And voila, there we have our released valve. So you can just push it down and remove it from the head. No judgments, please. Remember, we didn't clean this up before, so you really can't say nothing about it. All right, so at this point, we take our long nose pliers, go in there and just basically yank it out. I haven't found a way of removing these without killing them without damaging them completely so I usually just yank them out and deal with the fallout from there yeah so that's out we'll toss that in the bin rest of its buddies then now you have to go in there and check if there are any remnants which is what I will do next this is where the tweezer comes in handy just go in there and feel for any waste once clear, you can quickly wipe it down. Like I said, no judgments. This is a quick fix. Typically, I would have really cleaned this up, but um, there's no time. Get the replacement. Then lube it up. Always make sure you lube it up. It's an important part so that the valve will have an easy time 
going in as well as the the seat itself you can also use the tweezer to hold it in place as you put it in it has some sort of click lock assembly so once you push it in you'll feel where it settles that's it put the valve back in be careful not to force it it's a touch and feel thing remember the lubrication this way it also comes in handy and once the valve is seated adjust your block of wood to hold the valve put the spring back put the seat and the locks back I always recommend to do this now and just align them according to how uh, your finger will be will be uh, nudging them in place so I'd always recommend do a, a 12 and 6 o'clock position so that your finger goes that way over the locks reason is you'll see in a bit so once it's back in place it's unlikely that the the, the locks will pop out now so you don't need the rug but if you're not sure or doing this for the first time you may want to just have the rug in place then adjust the tool accordingly then put your finger in the hole to hold the locks and then push the tool in to compress the spring and then just touch and feel for when the locks go into place this is why I was saying put them at 12 and 6 o'clock once you do that you'll just feel them slide in and it locks it clicks you may not hear it on camera but it clicks so after that you can just hand press the tool play around with the valve a little bit to see that it's actually seated and then voila that's done so once it's done it'll look something like this just like it came out and because the buckets were already marked and checked when I'm done with the valve, I like to put the bucket and shim back in place. Done. So let's try and get a close up to that now on the next valve. Okay, I have tried to get this shot within range. So I hope you'll be able to see what I see. So again, two in. Adjust it for throw. And get your rug, protect the locks, then Jimmy Jimmy, once you hear the pop, they're released, remove the rug, magnetic pickup, oh this time both locks came out, interesting, then remove the valve, Spring. and that's pretty much it this is hard this is hard if you don't have a point of view as I do but yeah let's try another shot okay just for kicks I want to time this and see how long each takes uh, reset and start so the block of wood is already underneath the head supporting the valve I have my tool I shall adjust it slightly position it in place and make sure it's fully unlocked protect our assets with the rug and then wait for the pop there we go once it's popped make sure you maintain compression get your magnetic pickup try find the little buggers in there there we go I have one and the second one Sometimes you can get away with removing just one. Sometimes you have to do both because they tend to they tend to jump. Let's see. Ah, this one won't, so it's safe to remove the rug. 
decompress the tool, remove the tool, pick up the rest of the assets just for safekeeping, put the other lock in place. Since I have fat fingers, tweezers come in very handy now. Put that aside, pick up the spring, put that aside, flip the head over, push the valve out, put that aside, get your long nose pliers and wiggle wiggle. These guys don't always come out the first time, so it takes some tries and since I mentioned already I don't know how to get these out without damaging them but it doesn't matter because they are not going back into active duty anyway so there we go the guy is out that's into the trash it's usually a good time to also run your run your tweezer just to feel for any remnants because they have rubber bases that sometimes tear off when you remove it quick clean please don't judge purists in the house this is a quick job I'm just showcasing to you the process because usually I would have had this head cleaned good enough for the queen to eat off of. But we're on the clock and the vehicle needs to get out. So replacement seal, lube it up. Not too much, just a bit. The tweezer comes in handy now to also hold it and put it back in place. Once, it, once it's seated, just finger press it to make sure the seat is aligned. Once it stops moving side to side, you know you're good. Get your valve, wipe it down, flip the head over, insert the valve nice and slowly, pops in place, put the block back in place to hold your valve. Spring back in place and if you recall this is the time I said align your locks in accordance with your finger orientation so 12 to 6 o'clock so since I'll be coming in this way put those like that this helps because when your finger is putting pressure on it it will keep them seated put your tool back in place Remember since the since the spring is uncompressed now, the tool will need to stretch a bit more. So you also don't need the rug at this point, but if you're new to this, you might want to have it just in, in case these guys jump. Okay, apply some tension. Then just, it's, it's, a, it's, it's not a science here, it's pretty much a touch and feel thing. So you'll feel the locks start to go into place and you'll just wiggle them around as you press down to see where they're seated and that's why the 12 to 6 angle is important because it helps you know when you can feel both at the same level so once you remove tension from the tool you'll automatically know that they're seated so carefully lift off visually inspect it's okay if there's a gap on one side because they're meant to free roam. Uh, looks good. Wipe it down. Lube it up. Reinstall the bucket. And that took just about six minutes. Not bad. So now you know. About 60 12 million others to do and then we're done with the head we clean it up put it back on the vehicle check for clearances and reinstall the timing kit this one ends here